Hey, what is going on, you guys? Angelo here from One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry podcast. Hope you're doing all right. We wanted to bring a bonus episode for you. After recording our forthcoming Texas episode, that's in Austin, part two, we started talking about the Super Mario Brothers movie, the one released April 5th, 2023. Uh, Mai Chow had watched it on his own, but I want to thank John for inviting me on release day at CityWalk. It was a lot of fun. We had a lot of snacks, probably more than what was uh, humanly allowed, and uh, we also stole some people's seats at first, so um, that was a lot of fun. Uh, but we found our seats and uh, we enjoyed uh, enjoyed the movie from there. I know we talk food here, and we're not trying to stray away from that anytime soon. Uh, but I thought we had a fun conversation, and um, I wanted to share that with you. Just as a word of caution, we didn't intend to spoil anything, and we don't discuss the whole plot. Uh, but there might be some mild spoilers, just based on uh, you know us talking about different parts of the movie and what we enjoyed. Uh, but without further ado, these are our thoughts on the Super Mario Brothers movie. Enjoy. We should have been shills for the Mario movie. Oh, to talk about that? Yeah. You want to talk? Oh. No, no, I don't care enough. I was just, like, just going to say that people should watch the Mario movie so John gets a bigger bonus. Uh, we can, um, on the next time we record, there's still time. We can talk about it. Yeah. Did you, have you seen it? Yeah. John, John invited me to oh, that on the thing. So Nice. I, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty good. Um, it was a great movie. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, I don't. I don't know. Um, I don't know what people are. I mean, I, I was after I watched the movie. I watched like other reviews and like what other people mm-hmm. thought about it. So of course you see a whole range of like different reactions, right? Like, of course, people yeah. that do like it, and then all the people that are like critical of it. Um, you go first. Like, what did you like about it? It was just a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. It's like a fun movie, good to yeah. watch. Yeah, hella references, right? That I really like. I, I would def- watch. I don't know if I'd watch it in theaters again. I kind of want to, but also mm. theaters are expensive. You don't. You don't uh, feel it's like strong enough to bring you back. I don't know. Theaters are just expensive. I mean, I mean, I think you can just, uh, you know, you will find it eventually somewhere. You know, yeah, on Peacock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fucking Peacock. Oh man. Uh, it's a great it's movie. A movie. I um I also enjoyed it a lot. I um you know, I thought it was a it in some ways it was a safe move, but it was a still a good move to give it to Illumination. Um Oh yeah. You know, Illumination because is always pretty fucking pretty. Yeah, their their animation is is really great even though yeah. their storytelling and, you know, whatever are just kind of, you know, just kind of lighthearted whatever, right? So Yeah. Not not always necessarily. I mean, what like, are you expecting from a Mario movie, though? Well, yeah, I th- I think there's something to be said about that too. Like, it doesn't have to be a deep, you know, kind of profound <laughs> whatever. Like, it can just be a fun movie, you know. Fucking video game movie. <laughs> just because Last of Us is super deep or whatever. Fuck right, that. I don't right. Care. No, but again, I um, I but I will kind of uh, agree to an extent. Like, there was um, some people argue that. Uh, there, even though it's the Super Mario Brothers movie, you know, that's the title, like, it's you didn't Mario. see, you didn't see, yeah, you didn't see a lot of the brothers together, right? Because that's, that's the whole, like, story in there. Um, mm-hmm. So it's, like, focusing a lot on Mario, um, and then even the relationships with him and the other characters, they're not that deep, but, you know, they, they do work together, obviously, and, um, and it, uh, it turns out, I think the story still, like, works out pretty well. I wanted to get yeah. your thoughts on the the casting choices of the characters um you know and and see you know what you thought about those seth rogan is weird as donkey kong okay you'd expect a deeper voice uh-huh. like someone more you know instead of it's seth rogan it's just weird it's weird he just okay. doesn't sound like intimidating or powerful so I, like you i guess like they really. adjusted the they definitely adjusted the character right to fit uh the voice because yeah. like, the personality of Donkey Kong, I think, is fitting to what Seth Rogen did. Um, yeah, I'd say. Um, you know, it's kind of a showboating, you know, uh, you know, kind of a cheese kind of thing. But, um, but yeah, I think you're right. You know, in in a more typical, uh, in a more typical universe setting, um, probably a a more deeper, maybe somewhat intimidating uh, voice would have been mm-hmm. appropriate, but. Again, like I maybe it's part of the lightheartedness, maybe in the story uh, telling that 
probably led there to that. Or again, you know, like it's just uh, the name as well, right? The the yeah. pull. Seth uh, Rogen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, um, I also wished Cranky Kong sounded older. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, he he sounded really spry for a guy with a long fucking beard. Oh, okay. I thought I thought that was fine because it's basically like a a big Jewish family or whatever just talking to each <laughs> other, you know. So it's it works for me. <laughs> okay. Okay. But I imagine okay. I like it that way. I imagine like uh you know for those who actually play the game, I didn't play too much Donkey Kong, so um mm. I I don't really I wouldn't really know like you know what what would be a good fit um you know for the characters but like again like because of that interaction like i said like i i feel like it works just fine <laughs> okay that's fair that's fair um also like if i didn't know i would not be able to tell that i was kicking michael key oh yeah Toad. yeah i i that just wild. i saw i saw an interview like in one of the talk shows you know um with him and like how he kind of got to that voice and so he was kind of slowly like modulating up for like how he would get to that voice <laughs> And you're oh, right. Really? Like it's pretty wild. I I had thought that uh, um, he had uh, they had they had modulated the voice like um, after the fact. Oh, post, yeah, maybe oh. post or something like a apply an effect or something. But no, mm. that's his voice. His voice. Uh, oh, that, shit, even crazier. That, that guy is uh, unreal. He's great. That's really uh, good. I mean, I love really Keegan Michael Key. His Key and Peele stuff. Like a lot of his mm. work is uh, is great. And so yeah, I thought it it, it worked out pretty good. Um, with his uh, yeah, banter definitely. with uh, with uh, Mario, and um, so oh, that was fun. I like that. He was a good character. Um, Toad was a good character. Yeah. Um, but um, who else? Well, you have um, you Chris know, Pratt. Taylor. We don't talk about that. Oh, you don't. <laughs> we don't talk about Chris Pratt. Interesting. Um, I did love Jack. Like Bowser's character in general was so mm-hmm. good, mm-hmm. and I don't know if that's because they picked Jack Black, they decided mm-hmm. to make him like that. Mm-hmm. Or, like, I don't know, because it's very Jack Black the way that that Bowser was, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think some people argue that um, uh, even though Jack Black gives a great performance throughout the film, um, but um, I think similar maybe to what you were expecting with like uh, Cranky Kong um, or Donkey Kong, like mm. they probably want you know some people might have been expecting someone more menacing you know, more threatening, Mm -hmm. um, throughout the film, you see, I think you see both sides, you see, you know, the outward, you know, threatening, um, yeah, Bowser, King Koopa, but, um, uh, you also obviously see the, the scenes, um, you know, his personality in between, you know, you have the terror stuff and everything, but then what happens in Mm -hmm. between? It's like his planning, obviously of, um, of earning Peach's, uh, affection or whatever, you know? And so his ways to do that, you know, you see, you see the glimpses of that, which is kind of hundred percent Jack Black there. And that's not acting. That's just how he is. That's just it. I mean, admittedly, that's like how (laughs) Seth Rogen was too. It's like, I'm not, I don't do voices. Like, this is just me, right? (laughs) That is true. That is also true. (laughs) But yes, uh, with Jack Black, I thought that was, uh, that was a great movie. I enjoyed still seeing, um, the character, even though, you know, in both sides, you know, um, Mm -hmm. so, uh, I thought that was a good move too. Um, and then there was, uh. Uh, of course, uh, Anya Taylor Joy as uh, as Peach. Oh, so I don't uh, actually have anything against Peach in the movie. Okay, all right, I liked her. I don't know who Anya Taylor Joy is. Uh, well, she was the girl that oh, was in. The girl from... Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's like I thought. Yeah, it might ring a bell. Huh? Um, yeah, she's also uh, the lead character in that uh, next Netflix series, um, Queen Gambit. Queen Gambit, yeah. So, yeah, uh, among other things, I'm sure, but those were the, probably the things that stood out. Yeah. Um, but I, mean, I think I like Peach here. She wasn't mm-hmm. so, just some damsel in distress kind of mm-hmm, thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think it was interesting how they portrayed, like, um, you know, her, but you know, being from maybe like another galaxy, oh, another, yeah. another world, or something. Maybe not necessarily Earth, right? Like maybe something else, mm-hmm. cosmic, but somewhere um, else with humans. Something, yeah, exactly. Human, humanoid. Because, yeah. um, like, what was it? You know how the meme was where Toadette gets the power crown and turns mm-hmm. into Peach? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, they did tease the second one. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. I'm sure that it will because I'm sure it's going to do really well. Or at least I hope they do. It's so they good. better. I mean, they, again, like, um, I'm glad that Nintendo finally decided to kind of make the move again. Um, yeah, after the 90s one. Well, I don't, it is, 
it is bizarre. I don't know what your thoughts are because I've watched the movie a few times in the past, mm-hmm. and um, it is a bizarre movie. Like yeah, for for what they're weird. trying to earn, uh, <laughs> trying to accomplish, you know, in in the yeah. Mario universe, it's like this is weird. This is uh, definitely a departure from what Nintendo probably wanted it to be. This is. This yeah. film, this movie is definitely the film that that Nintendo wanted all along. You know this type. Oh, of this movie. one, yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm glad they they did. Um, they had a good amount of control and and you know watch of like how it went down. Um, you're right. All the details and the references and the anything that's. I'm just wondering, is anything that stood out to you? Um, I mean, you know? all the fight scenes had hella smash references, right? Yeah, yeah. Like you had Donkey Kong doing the drop kick. Mm-hmm. Forward mm-hmm. air, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, you had him do his roll attack, his dash attack. Yeah. Uh, the last couple things in the movie is Mario's forward air, which is a punch down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When he did that to Bowser, that was, he and Luigi, that was really cool. Yeah. Um, Bowser had a spitting shell attack too. Yep. Yep. It was really cool. Uh, yeah, it was I like great. Those references for sure. Yeah, a lot of good references. Uh, they really, I think, partly, you know, people probably are, you know, for the people that argue, oh, there should have been like a deeper story or a more complex storyline. It's like, I, you know, I, I don't really ex- expect much from that. And I think partly, not necessarily directly, but partly like, there's a lot to catch up on, you know, as far as the fan service in this movie, you know, they, they want to make <laughs> yeah. sure they, ser- you know, they reference as much as they can, um, big and small. Um in that uh you know for in the movie so the, the story itself doesn't have to be too profound or nothing but uh this is uh i think they did a great a great job with that um there's no mario story that has been very kind of deep except unless you go to like the mario rpg games oh sure but that's more luigi involved yeah yeah i mean they could do that for another movie but for this first one it's 100 better to just have like a whole fan service part of it i think so i think so yeah so um, I also did appreciate if you didn't catch a, um, you know, the original uh, voice actor for Mario, uh, the Mario voice, Chris Martinet. Um, he makes, you know, his camp, he makes two appearances. I mean, as far as the, the iconic, you know, voice, uh, you'll see him there, but then you'll but also, one, what's that? Is he the one that looks like, like plumber Mario, like with the red overalls? Uh-huh. Like that's yeah. him? Mm-hmm. In the, pe- in the, in the punch out, uh, uh, you know, pizza spot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, but then, awesome. but then also know. if you didn't catch, uh, he also plays their dad. That's it. That's him. Oh, mm-hmm. Really? So that's his actual voice. Mr. Mario. Yeah. Mr. Mario. Um, that's so awesome. it's a good, um, uh, although again, I do agree to some of the critics that, you know, even though you say we don't talk about Chris Pratt and that's fine. I, I do agree to an extent that if you were to listen to um, that, you know, the the Mario, that voice, right? The the typical Mario voice and catchphrases and stuff. Mm-hmm. If you were to hear that voice, um, you know, the, the Italian, you know, quips and whatever for the whole hour and a half, I think it might wear you down. I think it might get old. Um, then I feel the novelty might wear off. Yeah. Oh, definitely. While. So... Maybe it was okay. Uh, I don't know if it Chris Pratt specifically, you know, to have him, but I think him at least, you know, in that role, at least in that having a so-called normal uh, voice is okay. Too you whiny. Know? It's too whiny. You think it's too whiny? I just don't like his voice. Oh, okay. Or, like on a personal level. <laughs> well, just in general. <laughs> yeah, Chris Pratt's voice. Just at a, God, in a, bio, at a biological level, his voice is too whiny. <laughs> I just don't like how it sounds. Okay, okay. Like, even as our Lord, maybe not whiny, mm-hmm. but nasal, too nasal. I see, I see. Uh, yeah. And then, um, I don't know if you're familiar with his, you know, with Luigi, if you're familiar with Charlie Day. Um, I only know him from one thing, which is Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Um, which is just one of the most. Oh, him. Yeah, I don't know if it's yeah. a bizarre. It's just a. I I do like that series a lot. It's just a very just. Mm-hmm. I don't know, just offbeat, weird uh, series yeah. about just the most selfish people in the world, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Charlie, uh, you know Charlie, um, Charlie Day as Charlie is uh, is very uh, is a pretty crazy character there. 
Um, but I, I also agree with those who say that his casting for Luigi kind of as this worried kind of um, character, uh, anxious, whatever, like works for um, for Luigi. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it was um, it was interesting. So, um, yeah, but and the music cues are so good. The music. Yeah. Yeah. I think the music uh, did very well um there you know i was saying like i was thinking like there's there's you know it's been out you know the property's been out there a long time right so there's been a lot of time for arrangements and and things to be made you know from that Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of good material out there um a lot of good uh orchestration and arrangements for this for this uh in this universe but yeah you're right um the arrangements from uh the musical director was uh very uh very fitting for a lot of the scenes yeah um so I uh, I enjoy those enjoy those two. Um, yeah. I like when Luigi was in the forest. Mm-hmm, that was mm-hmm. Luigi's mansion music. Yeah, right. When right. They were exactly. underground before they went to that pipe. That was underground right. music. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, it's just yeah. so good. Yeah. No, I think I think um, it's uh, it's very it's very good. And I you know overall like um, the music in general I think was always arranged even before like when it was originally arranged like yeah. it was always. Um, heart made to be um i think it was always meant to be adapted uh for mm. orchestral or like just more grand kind of arrangements j- like big jazz and things like that that works um and so I'm, I'm glad it you know made its way uh to the big screen and and yeah it really delivered you know um but i also wanted to mention one thing like in the movie that um uh, I don't know if you had appreciation for it, but like at the uh, in the Rainbow Road, you know, scene, you have mm-hmm. the uh, what is basically the the characterization of the of the blue shell, right? Yeah, um, you know, <laughs> what I about thought, it? No, I thought that was very cleverly done because um, uh, I think for those who already who are very familiar with, they kind of identify it right away. Um, but then like for those who aren't as familiar, then, then you see like the, the, the Koopa with, with the big machine, right. They're driving, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, then when all else, like as a last resort, right. Then yeah. they come out, they do the blue shell properly and they kind of destroy, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. Um, but it was really, it was kind of cool seeing that as a, um, uh, like as an actual character, you know, a, uh, okay. a menacing, uh, a menacing character. So it's so good. Yeah. So. Just even when he took the sh- that, that whole Mario Kart scene was mm-hmm. actually really good. Mm-hmm. Like when they the anti gravity thing, yeah, and then apparently you could turn it off and just fall like Peach. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. even just Mario taking a shortcut is yeah. just so yeah, so Mario Kart. Yeah, no, it was, was um, it was very well, very well done. Again, there's just a lot of like these references. I think you know that yeah, uh, the people who know like will appreciate. So, yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. I really like that. Yeah, definitely. It's such a good movie. Yeah. So ho- hopefully we look forward to like the next one, whether it's another Mario movie or just like something else, because there's obviously a lot of other. Um, so much. I know. So, I mean, like Ze- obviously like Zelda, Metroid, you know, whatever, like there's so much potential. And um, F-Zero, give me an F-Zero movie. F-Zero. <laughs> race car drama come on it's been a long time that's the new movie yeah take that fast 10 it's like you know the next uh that's not about racing cars anymore (laughs) i don't care what anyone says (laughs) well i think this will be the answer to that now (laughs) i guess so yeah what what fast can only hope to be so um (laughs) they're already in space so they're they're ready already exactly there you go that's a start i guess Oh god! Oh man! So yeah, overall, uh, a good movie. Where where did you watch it? Um, I watched it at LA Live actually. LA Live. Okay. Did they have like a yeah, big not- kind of? Did you go on like on um, release day or whatever? Or um... uh, last night. Oh okay. So Friday. Okay. Was it a, a a good turnout? You know, a lot of people. Oh, yeah, or... it was full. Yeah, I I bet they're, they're they they will have no problem making their money back. Um, oh, I'm sure. Probably. Who, who knows? Maybe as soon as like over the week, the first weekend, they just like make all their money back. It could. I hope uh, so. Yeah. It's. Um. I think it's well deserved. You know. I. Um. It's uh, really well done. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, I like it. 
And I, I mean, this is one of the few like video game um, t- franchises or universes that I actually uh, enjoy, <laughs> I guess, or keep up with. It. Yeah, and understand. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> it's my pace. Um, There's so, nothing wrong with it. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully, we'll look forward to uh, to the next one. I, you know, it could be another just kind of lighthearted, just kind of action, just visually uh, pleasing, you know, kind of movie. Again, doesn't have to have a big a story or anything like that. Um, yeah, it's it's a game about Mario. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what are you expecting? Yep. Oh man. Anyway, that's uh, that was good. I enjoyed that. Yeah, that's it for this after show. <laughs> um, sorry for any potential spoilers. You should oh, put a spoiler alert. Ma- mild spoilers. Maybe, maybe we'll just um, separate this as a set, as its own thing. Like, <laughs> um, don't bundle it in with a. Uh, with this thing so anyway ah, so good yeah awesome awesome 